Hey guys, welcome to your next project. In this project, I wanted to do something a little bit different. We're going to build a an e-commerce theme or an online shop theme. All right, now we're not going to have full functionality to be able to buy products, but just the theme and also how to format it so that the posts uh, look more like product pages. Okay, so this is the home page. We have a header. We have a spot for a custom image. Now this is going to be uh, available through the theme customizer. So you can upload that. We have our menu over here. We have a showcase widget here with uh, a heading, some text, and a read more. And I'll show you where we can actually edit that content. Down here we have the main, um, I guess the, the main post loop, but we have it formatted so that it looks more like an e-commerce site. And then we have some side widgets over here. Okay, now if I click on details for one of these, it's going to take us to the product page. It has the image, the title, the, the text, the price, and then a buy now button. Also, we have the tags down here. All right. Um, also, if we go to the blue shirt, you can see we have some images here. So you can include uh, an image gallery as well, and I'll show you how to do that. The pages themselves, very simple. We just have a, just an about page with a title and a heading. Same thing with sample page. Um, if we go to the back end and go to posts, you can see the different products we have. Click on that. Okay, we're just including the text, the price, and the button. All right, down here you can see we're using the featured image. Okay, now for the showcase, if we go to appearance and then widgets, um, you can see in showcase we have a showcase widget. This is actually a custom widget that we create, well, we're going to create. Okay, and we're going to use it in the theme. We also have our sidebar with the categories and then the text widget. Okay, now for the gallery, if we go to the blue shirt product and say add media, you can actually go to create gallery and choose a bunch of images and then go ahead and upload that gallery. Okay, so, uh, and that's, that's popping up right here. Okay, if we click visual you can see that and you can edit it as a whole with by clicking that icon all right so it's pretty simple it's not the best looking online shop you've ever seen but um, it does have some features that are really important oh and for the logo what we can do to switch that is go to appearance and then customize and go to site identity and then you have this logo option where you can remove it, you can also change it, and you can also update your title and tagline. Okay, so that's going to be this project. Hopefully you enjoy it, and I'll see you in the next video. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started, and what we're going to do first is just build a flat-out HTML template, and then after that we'll move on to integrating it and create, making it a, a WordPress theme. All right, so let's go ahead and create a folder for this template. And I'm going to call this my shop underscore HTML. All right, and then inside there, we're going to create a couple things. Actually, you know what? Before we create that, let's download Foundation from foundation.zurb.com. We're going to click on this one over here, complete. All right, and then we'll open up that zip file, and let's just take everything out and move it to our folder. All right, now if we open up index.html with Chrome, you can see we have pretty much a, a boilerplate. Okay, so the CSS is implemented, the JavaScript should be implemented. So let's go ahead and open up index.html in our editor. All right, so we're going to kind of just work through this, replace what we need. Uh, let's also open up our CSS file, which is app CSS. Okay, there's nothing in here. The only styles is the core foundation styles. Now, I also have some images that we need to upload. So I'm going to create a new folder called IMG. And you should have these files in your project file. And I'm going to paste these in. Okay, so if we just take a look at these images, 
Let me make these bigger. Okay, so we have our logo, logo.jpg, and then we have a bunch of clothes. Okay, we have a bunch of shirts, we have a hat. This blue shirt has multiple images because we're going to implement a mini gallery. So these are all the images that we'll be needing. All right, so let's go back to the index HTML. Now the head can stay how it is. We're linking our CSS files. We have our viewport set, so we can leave that stuff. So let's go right below the body tag, and we're going to keep using the grid system. All right, so we have a div here with the class of row. I'm actually going to change this div to a header. Okay, and then inside of it, we're going to have a six column div. And then we'll have another six column div next to it. All right, so on this side, let's put the logo. So we're going to say IMG. Um, source is going to be slash IMG slash logo dot JPEG. Okay, let's see if that shows up, which it doesn't. Um, let's do dot slash image. All right, so we have our logo. On this side, we're going to have our navigation menu. All right, so let's say UL. We're going to give it a class of menu and also simple and main nav. All right, and then inside that, we're going to have some li tags. with a link. Okay, this one will go to index.html. I'm going to copy this li. This one will be about and we'll have an about page. And then this one will be this can be anything really. It's not going to link anywhere, but we'll just say services. All right, so save that, reload. Okay, so the style that it has is coming from the core foundation file. We are going to add some other styles. For instance, we want to push it down. We want to push it over. Uh, but we'll get into the CSS after the HTML. Okay, next we have the showcase area, which is going to change quite a bit. Um, I do want to keep div class row. We're just going to add on to this class called showcase we're gonna leave this 12 column div we're gonna leave this call out div but I'm actually gonna add a class called secondary which will make it gray all right and then everything in that we can get rid of okay and then in here what we're gonna do is we're gonna have an h1 Oops. And this will say discount clothing. And then I'm just going to paste in a paragraph and a button. All right. Save that. Take a look. All right. We're going to add some more styles to that after, so don't worry about it. So down here, we have another row. This has an eight column div, which is this area here, the main area. And then there is uh, way down at the bottom, there's a four column div, which is the sidebar. So we want to clear these divs out completely. Okay, so I'm going to go to here. So now we have a cleared out eight column div. And then for the sidebar, we're going to do the same thing. All right. For the products, we're going to create a div, give it a class of products. All right, and then in here, we're going to have a bunch of four column divs. Okay, we want three four column divs going across each row. All right, so what we can do is say div class, and we're going to set it to large 
four, medium four, small twelve. Columns. I'm going to give it a class of product and also a class of end. Okay. Now in here we'll have an H3. We'll say blue shirt. Okay, then we'll do an H4 below it. Uh, let's see, price. Now, the when we do the WordPress theme, things might look a little different than the HTML theme, um, just because of, of there's some limitation to where we can put the content. So uh, just just remember that that there may be some minor differences. All right, so we have the title, we have the price. Let's do the image. Okay, then we'll do a button. All right. So let's grab where we have the four column div. We're going to grab that and then just paste it in a bunch of times. And then we're just going to change the content up a little bit. So this will be red shirt. We'll go ahead and change the price. We're going to change this to red shirt. Okay, this one will be gray. This one will be orange. And then I think there's a black. All right, so let's see what that gives us. All right, so the images aren't showing up. Let me just check the names. Okay, it's shirt black. All right. So the image names are not correct. Shirt black. All right, let's try that. Looks like the first one. Did I miss that? Shirt blue. Oh, shirt blue white. Okay, so there's our products. Now for the sidebar, we're going to go down to the four column div here. And I'm just going to paste this in. Okay, so it's a div with the class of callout that gives it a border and some padding. Then we have our categories heading. Then we have a UL with the class of menu and vertical. All right. And then we're going to have another uh, sidebar widget right below it. So we're going to put a line break. And let me grab that. Okay, it's just a heading. We can change this heading. and some text and a button. Okay. So now we're going to go down to the very bottom right above the script tags and we're going to create our footer. Okay, footer is just going to be a paragraph. We'll put our copyright And there we go. So that's it for the HTML for the index page. So now what we want to do is move on to the details page. And obviously this doesn't look very good. Uh, we'll fix that in the second part where we'll do the CSS. All right, so what I want to do now is go back and let's create a new file. And this is going to be details 
dot html okay we're going to open that up and i'm going to copy everything that i have in index html all right and then we'll just go down to where the main area is which is this eight column div uh, we'll change this class to single product and then let's change this to actually we'll get rid of all of these four column divs but one all right and then we're going to change it from four columns to 12 so it'll go actually do I want to do that yeah okay and then inside that 12 column div we're gonna have two more columns so let's copy that I'm just gonna get rid of this all right so we have a 12 column div and then inside that we're gonna make this one five columns that's where the image will go and then this one here will be seven all right so let's go in the five column first and we're going to have a link here to go back as well Oops. okay for now this will just go to index.html and then under that we're going to have our image okay we're just going to use the blue white shirt for now All right, let's take a look at the details page. Details HTML. All right, so the image isn't showing up. Uh, let's see, shirt blue, that should be a dot. Okay, now on the other side, in the seven column div, we're gonna have the uh, content. So I'm actually gonna just paste that in. Okay, we have an H2 h4 with the price a paragraph for the description a button and then we have some tags so let's save that all right that looks good so far now we're also going to create an about page just to represent uh, a normal page that's not a product page so let's go and create new And we're going to say about.html. Let's open that up. And I'm just going to copy what we have in the details page. All right, and then we just want to go to the main area, which is right here. And instead of having a five column and a seven column, we're going to get rid of those and just have the 112. All right, and then we'll just put in a heading here. And let's grab some sample text. Paste that in. All right, so let's go to about, and there we go, just some text and a heading. All right, all right, so the HTML version of our theme, we have the HTML done, but we need to do the CSS. All right, so let's go ahead and open up app.css, and if we take a look at the template, we're going to start with the core styles now you'll notice that by default the buttons and the links are blue I actually want to change that to red alright so what we're going to do here is we're going to put an a tag and let's say color and that's going to be a value of EC2 
C2F, okay, which will give it that red color. All right, so that's the links. Now, uh, we also want the buttons to have a background color of that. All right, and I also want to give the buttons a little border at the bottom. So let's say border, bottom, and we'll do three pixels. Let's do triple three, solid. Okay, now when I hover over it, it turns blue. Same thing with the link, so we want to fix that. So let's do an A hover. Okay, I'm going to fix the color, which will be triple three. And we also want button, hover, and that's going to be the background. All right, let's check that. Okay, that's good. So let's now take care of this menu. So that's in the header. So we're going to say header dot main nav and let's float it to the right. And let's do margin top 30 pixels and let's set the font size a little bigger. We'll do 18 pixels. All right. And then for the li tags, we're going to do those. Okay, we just want to give a padding right of 20. Okay, reload, and there we go. Let's also give a little margin to the header on the bottom. Okay. So next let's do the showcase area. So that has a class of showcase and it also has a class of callout. Okay, so first thing we want to text align to the center and let's add a padding of 30 pixels and also a margin bottom of 20 pixels. All right, that looks better. Now for the products area. Let's say products, um, columns. We're just going to add a margin bottom. All right, and let's do product singular. And for that, we want to text align to the center. Uh, let's see. So for the button, I want to add a little margin to the top. So I'm going to say product button margin top. And let's do 10 pixels. All right. Let's save that. Reload. Okay. That's starting to look good. Now for the menu on the right, I want to add a little bit of a border underneath each list item. So that has a class of vertical. So we'll say vertical li. Border bottom, let's do one pixel and we'll do triple C solid. Yeah. All right. Now I don't want the last one to have a border, so let's copy that. And then we're just going to add on to this last child and we'll set this to none. Okay, that should get rid of the last border. And I think we're just about there. Let's do the footer. Okay, footer, I'm going to give it a background 
triple three. Let's give it a color of white. And what else? Let's align things to the center. Let's give a margin to the top. And also a padding to the top. We'll do 20 pixels. And I think that's it. So let's save it. All right. No, that doesn't look right. Um, let's set a height. I don't know, 70. That's good. All right. So not too bad. Let's let's take a look at um, details. Okay, that looks good. About page looks good. Actually, that shouldn't be centered. Oh, I think I have a class in there that I shouldn't. Let's see. Yeah, we have right here product. Let's take off product and end. There we go. All right, so our HTML template is done. In the next video, we're going to jump into WordPress and we'll start to create a WordPress theme based on this design. All right, so now that the HTML template is done, we can now start to convert it into a WordPress theme. So I have a default installation of WordPress, and what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new theme folder. Okay, so I have my uh, WordPress installation over here. I'm going to go to WP Content and then Themes, and let's create a new folder, and we'll call it My Shop. All right, inside my shop, we're going to create an uh, index.php file. And we're also going to create a style.css file. Okay, and let's go ahead and put our declaration in, in our style.css file. So we'll say theme name is going to be my shop. Say author. You can put your name there. Also, your URL or URI actually. And description. And version. All right, so let's save that. And now if I go to the back end here and go to appearance and then themes, you can see we have my shop. All right, I do have a screenshot that I can pop in there, which will be in your project files. Okay, themes, my shop. And I'm just going to paste that in. All right, so now we have my shop. Let's go ahead and activate it. Obviously, right now, if I go and reload the front end, it's just blank. All right, so let's open it up. We'll open the folder up in Windows. Okay, and what we want to do is also open up the HTML file, our HTML template that we created, which is on my desktop. All right, so let's bring over the CSS and the JS folder. Now, we have a style.css in our WordPress site, so what I want to do is I'm going to take everything out of the app CSS folder from our template, and I'm going to put it, I'm going to cut that out, and I'm going to put it into style.css and save it okay and then we can actually just completely delete the app.css 
All right. So now in the index PHP folder, we're going to put everything from our index HTML folder. So let's open that up and I'm going to copy everything here and then bring it over to index PHP. All right. And let's save that. And if we go to our website, reload, you can see all of our HTML is here. Okay. The CSS isn't connected yet, so we're not seeing that, but you can see the HTML. All right, so let's go to the top of the file and we're going to fix our style sheet declarations. And actually, before we do that, we can add our title. So we'll get rid of that and I'm going to say PHP blog info. And in here, we're going to put in name. And then for the style sheets. We have foundation. This one is in the CSS folder. So what we can do here is let's say PHP echo blog info. And in here we want to say template URL slash CSS slash foundation. And then this one, we're going to replace this whole thing here with blog info and then in here we can put in uh, style sheet underscore URL. Okay, let's save that reload. And now you can see that our CSS is in effect. Now in the head, the last thing we want to put up here is we want to say PHP and then we want WP underscore head. Okay, that'll put any extra stuff that is needed into uh, into the head file or into the head tags. So we're just going to work from the top down the body. We also want to add our body class. So right here, let's say PHP echo body class. Oh, actually, we don't need echo. Now for the logo, we're going to do something that we haven't done yet. We're going to implement an image and a logo upload from the theme customizer. So in order to do that, we need to create a functions file. So in our theme folder, let's create a file called functions.php. And we want to create a function for theme support. And we need PHP tags here. Okay, so we're going to say function. And we're going to use an MS prefix for my shop. Theme setup. All right, so we're going to say add theme support and then in here we want custom on uh, custom dash logo and let's see what else I think that's it's good for now so let's create our um, add action okay and then in here we're gonna put after setup theme and then we want ms underscore theme setup save that and then let's go to our index php and we're going to replace this static image and we're going to open up some php tags and let's check to see if the function exists So if function exists, the underscore custom underscore logo. Okay, if it exists, then we want to run it. All right. Now what we can do is go into our back end and in the theme, we're going to say customize, go to site identity. And now you should have this area here for a logo. All right, I'm going to click select logo 
and we're going to find it somewhere let's see where is it okay got it right here and select we should be able to make this much wider and say crop image and save and publish so now let's go to our front end and reload and now we have a logo so now let's do the menu alright so we'll go back to functions.php and we need to go back into the MS theme setup function and we want to set up nav menus so we'll say register underscore nav menus and in here we're going to have an array and let's say primary and primary menu now we'll save that and go to index PHP and we have our menu right here I'm going to just get rid of it completely and then we'll do PHP WP underscore nav underscore menu and inside there we'll have an array All right, and let's say theme location which will be primary and I'm also going to add a container class and that's going to be it's going to be menu simple and main nav okay it's just going to add the classes that we had before all right now i think yeah that should be good so we'll save it and then let's go to our back end and i'm going to go to first of all we'll reload now we should have a menus option so we'll click that and let's see I'm gonna get rid of that I'll keep the sample page alright make sure that you have this primary menu checked okay we'll say save menu and reload and now we have our menu okay and if I click on it you can see the links changed you won't see it down here because we don't have that area of the theme set up yet it's just static content for now but the menu is working the logos there uh, last thing I want to do in this video is just before I forget I want to go down into the footer and let's see right underneath the footer tags we're gonna put WP underscore footer alright save it and that should give us the admin menu up top alright so in the next video we're gonna be working with these widgets I'm actually gonna show you how to create a custom widget for our showcase area all right so I will see you in the next video all right so in this video we're going to create a custom widget for our theme so we have this showcase area and I just want to create a widget that can take in a title and some text and we'll spit it out right here in this widget position so if we look at this documentation page this is for the widget API basically what we need to do is create a class uh, that extends WP widget and it's going to have a few different methods. It'll have a constructor to um, to call the constructor of the parent class, and also set up the title and description. And then we have the widget method, which will output the content of the widget. We have um, the form method, which will output the admin form, and then we have the update, which will take care of updating any fields. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go into the WP content folder and then plugins and we're going to create a new folder there and we're going to call it showcase dash 
um, let's call it showcase dash widget because although it is a plugin, it's also a widget. So let's go ahead and create a new file here. And this is going to be called same thing showcase widget dot PHP. And then one more file. This is going to be the class file. So we're going to save it as class dot showcase widget dot PHP. All right. So the the showcase widget dot PHP file is going to be the main file, but the class is going to be where we'll we'll do most of the uh, most of the functionality. All right. So what we want to do in this file is we want to open up a comment block. Okay. We'll go like that. And this right here, we're going to say plugin name, which will be showcase widget and then we're going to do description simple showcase area version 1.0 and let's do one more which will be the author okay now we want to include the class file. So we'll say include and let's put in here class dot showcase widget dot PHP. Okay, then we need to register the widget. So we want function register showcase widget. And then we're going to call the register widget function and pass in showcase underscore widget. So this needs to be whatever your class name is. Okay, so that's what we'll name the class. And then we just need the add action. So action, we're going to say widgets init, and then we just want register showcase widget. And that's it for this file. So let's go into the class file now. And I'm actually going to grab this from the documentation, this sample. Okay, we'll paste that in. We need PHP tags though. Now I don't want this to take forever, so we're going to be doing some copying and pasting. Uh, first of all, I want to change the name of it from my widget to showcase widget. And then let's take a look at the constructor. So for now, I'm going to just get rid of what's in there and then just paste my code in. So what we are doing here is we're calling the parent constructor. The parent is this WP widget class. OK, and then we're just putting in an ID of showcase widget. We have the name showcase widget and then we have a description down here. OK, and a text domain, which can be anything you'd like. I just use text domain. All right. So constructor is pretty simple. This widget method here, this will um, display the, the front end of the widget. So we basically need three things. We need the title of the widget we need the heading which is this here and then we need a field for the text which is that so I'm gonna just paste this in real quick okay so we have our title now we're setting these to the instance okay instance heading instance text that that represents what is in the database for those values alright so we're gonna stay in the same method and I'm gonna paste some other stuff in all right, so the args we have before widget, after widget, okay, that's in case we want custom tags or whatever we want to go before and after. We also have them available for the title. We have before title and after title. So, for instance, if you wanted to use an H4, um, 
for the title you could do that or h1 whatever you'd want all right um, and then down here this actually shouldn't be form this should be display content and I'm going to have a function called get content all right we're passing in the heading and the text from up here all right and then of course we have the after widget so before we move on to these let's create this get content Okay, and that takes in the heading and text. Okay, let's just paste this in. And this could have very well just went right here, but I like to kind of separate it a little bit. So what we're doing is we have a, a variable called output. We're sending it to um, a template here with the H1, the text, and then we just have a button. Okay, and then we're just returning the output. All right, so that's actually be that's actually going here where we're calling it all right so let's go down to the form this represents the back end form where we can actually put the heading and the text and stuff like that okay let me just paste this part in so what we're doing is we're checking to see if there's a title if there is we're setting it the variable to whatever is in the instance if there's not then we're just gonna set it to showcase widget all right, and then we also need to get the heading and the text. We're pulling that those from the instance as well. Now for the actual back end form, it's, it's a lot of HTML. So what I'm going to do is just end the PHP here and then continue it right here. And then we can put all the HTML here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. And it's quite a bit if you need to pause it that's fine but basically we have a couple paragraphs and they contain a label for each field and then the input okay so you can see for the label we have um, we can echo out this get field ID and what we want is the title alright and then for the input we have um, an ID same thing get field ID and then the name of the field which is title um, and then right here for the name we have get field name title and then for the value we're using the title variable all right we're just escaping it with escape attribute or escape adder all right we're doing the same thing here for the heading and then the same thing for the text okay so it's it's really quite simple even though it looks like a lot of code so next we want to go to the update method this is where when we add uh, a heading and text in the back end and we click save this is what saves it all right so let me just grab some code here paste that in so we have an uh, instance which equals an, a blank, an empty array and then we're saying instance title equals uh, whatever is in the new instance okay whatever is saved as the title same thing with the heading we're setting it to the new instance heading and same with the text and then we're just returning that instance okay so this will update uh, whatever we put in for the fields in the back end widget form all right so let's go ahead and save that and uh, what we'll do now make sure both files are saved we'll go in the back end here and let's reload and then go to plugins and you can see right here we have the showcase widget has the description, the version, the name, and we're going to click activate. Okay, so we click activate, and then if we go to appearance, uh, let's see. Oh, we oh, you know what? We didn't set up a widget position yet. So let's go into functions.php in our themes folder, and we're going to set up our widget locations. So I'm going to go down to the bottom of the file and paste this in. All right, so what we're doing here is we have a function called MS init widgets and we have two places where we want widgets. One is on the sidebar and one is in the showcase for the widget we just created. All right, and we have um, in our sidebar we want the div class callout to wrap around the whole widget and then the, the title we want to be an H3. All right, 
Down here, we're calling our action on widgets init, and then we're just inputting the name of our function, ms init widgets. All right, so let's save that and go back to the back end and reload. And now under appearance, we can now see widgets. If we click that, you can see we have the sidebar and the showcase available. And if we go down here, you can see our showcase widget, which is the plugin we just created. So let's go ahead and add that to the showcase area. All right, so we have our title. What I'm going to do is get rid of the title. And for the heading, we'll say discount clothing. And for the text, I'm just going to copy what we have here. Okay, save that. Go back. Well, actually, the front end is not going to change yet because we didn't implement it in the template. But you can see that the content has saved. So what we need to do now is go into our index PHP file and go down to where we have this showcase area. And before we actually show it, we want to check to make sure that it's enabled. So we're going to say PHP if and we can use is active sidebar, which we've used in past projects. And the widget position is going to be showcase. Down here, we'll do an end if. Okay. And now what we want to do is replace the H1 paragraph and button. Okay, we want to get rid of that. And then we're going to say PHP dynamic underscore sidebar. And pass in the name of the position, which is showcase. Save that. Let's go check out the front end. And we get discount clothing. So just to make sure that it's actually reading our widget, let's go and change this to discount clothings and save. Go to the front end, reload, and we get discount clothings. So you know that this is coming from our custom plugin. All right, and we created a plugin that is not only, you're not all, only able to use it on this theme, you could use it anywhere. All right. So in the next video, we're going to take care of the sidebar widgets. Um, we want this categories to actually come from WordPress categories. All right, so we will get into that next. All right, so in the last video, we made a custom widget plugin for our showcase area. Now what I want to do is implement the sidebar. All right, we've already done half the work. If you look in functions PHP, we already have um, registered our sidebar area. So what we need to do now is go to uh, index PHP and go down to where we have our sidebar, which is this area here. And before I get rid of this, let's make sure that we create our widgets. All right, so we already have the categories one. We don't have to worry too much about that, but let's create this uh, this text one. Okay, so if we go to our back end here, we have the categories. We can bring that over. Save that. And then we also want the custom text. We want this one right here. We'll put that right under the categories. Paste in our heading and then our text. Actually, we want the text and the button. So I'm going to just grab that. All right, we'll save. And now we can go ahead and replace this stuff. Okay, so we want this entire callout div and then this entire callout div. All right, and then in here, what we'll do is check to see if the sidebar is active. So we'll say if is active sidebar and the position is also called sidebar okay and then in here we're going to say php 
um, dynamic sidebar. And save that. Let's go to the front end, reload. Okay, so there's our widgets. These are coming from the back end. Now for the categories, let's uh, let's create some. Oh, we have got categories. Why aren't they showing? Oh, they're not showing because um, there's nothing in them. Okay, by default, it's only going to show categories that have posts in them. Now these aren't the ones I want at all, so I'm going to get rid of these. And then I'm just going to add add a couple. We're going to say shirts. hats and shoes okay and if we go and reload you still won't see them because we don't have anything in them now just to make sure that the categories will show up I'm gonna just change I'm gonna add this hello world to all of the categories okay so now you can see they're showing up now I don't like how this looks. I wanted to uh, I wanted to use some custom classes, some foundation classes. So what we'll do is we'll create a widgets folder in the theme folder, and let's grab. Uh, we're gonna go. Actually, I'm gonna open this up in Windows. Okay, I'm gonna go to includes widgets and I want to grab the categories widget right here so we're gonna copy that and then we're gonna bring it to the theme folder Oops. widgets paste that in okay and then we can open that from within sublime and what we want to do is add on to the end of the class name custom and we want to just search for the UL tag and all I want to do is add some classes okay so class menu and vertical okay we'll save it and then we have to include that file in our functions PHP file alright so we want to go to the top and let's say require underscore once and then we're gonna pass in widgets slash um, what is it class WP dash widget dash categories okay so we're including that file now now we're gonna have to register it so let's go down to the bottom here and we'll create a function called ms underscore register widgets Okay, we want to pass in the class name, which is WP underscore widget underscore categories underscore custom. All right, and then we'll just add an action. All right save it and let's go and look at the front end now and now the categories you can see has changed and looks a little better now the next big thing we have to do is the main content area alright so we're gonna do that in the next video but before we go I just want to split up the index file into our header and footer files so we're gonna go from the very top here down to the end of the header tag. We're going to cut that and in its place we're going to say PHP 
get header. Okay, and then what we'll do is create a file called header.php. And we'll just paste that in there. All right, and we should see no change. So we'll do the same thing with the footer. So in index, we're going to go from the bottom up to, let's see, the footer. Cut that out, and then we're going to put in PHP WP underscore footer. Um, no, that's not right. We want get footer. All right, and then we'll just create a file called footer. And paste that in. Go back to the front end, reload, and everything's fine. Okay, so in the next video, we'll get into the main content area. Hey guys, in this video, we're going to start to work on this main content area, okay, the, the area where the posts show up. Now, right now, it's just a bunch of static HTML, so we're going to go ahead and fix that. So let's go into the index.php file in the My Shop theme folder. And we want to go to where we have this div class products. And inside there, we have these four column divs to represent each product. Uh, I'm actually going to add a class of row on this products div. And then what we want to do is get rid of all but one of these four column divs. So we'll get rid of that one all the way down to this div right here. Okay, we'll get rid of that. And then inside the four column div, I'm going to get rid of the content. And then what we'll do is we'll go right above it. And we want to create our while loop. All right, before we do the while, though, let's make sure that there are some posts. So we're going to say if have posts, and then we'll end it down here. Okay, so if the if there are some posts, then we want our while loop. Okay, so we'll say PHP while and we'll say while have posts. And then we have to just add the post right here. All right, and then we'll do the end while on the bottom of this div right here. So we'll say PHP end while. All right, now inside the div, we're going to have an H3, and that's going to be the title. So we can say PHP the title. We're also going to have the thumbnail, so let's do PHP, and then we're going to check for the thumbnail first. So we'll say if has uh, has post underscore thumbnail. Okay, if there's a thumbnail, then we're going to say PHP. the post thumbnail. Then we'll go right under the end if here and we need our button. So it's going to actually be a, a link formatted as a button. So we'll give it a class of button. And then this is going to go to PHP echo the permalink. Okay, and the, the text will just say details. Okay, so let's save that and let's take a look. Okay, so the reason we don't see anything here except for Hello World is that's the only post we have. So we're going to have to go in and create some posts. Let me just log back in real quick. All right, and we'll go to all posts, and you can see we only have Hello World. 
So let's go ahead and click Add New. Now notice that there's no area for the featured image down here. Okay, we're going to have to change. We're going to have to add that. So let's go to functions.php, and then we'll go into this MS Theme Setup function. And we're going to say add theme support. And we want post thumbnails. Okay, so now you can see down here we have the featured image box. So let's go ahead and click that. And I'm going to upload a file. Let me see if I can find it. Um, let's see. Trying to figure out where I put it. Okay, so I have all these shirts. Um, I'm going to choose this blue and white one. And we're going to set that as the featured image. And let's call this blue and white shirt. And then for the, the description, we're just going to get some sample text real quick. Okay, so I'll just copy a couple sentences for the description. Okay, we'll paste that in. And then we're also going to want the price. So we're going to put that in an H3. And we'll say $9.99. And then we're also going to want the button. So we'll give that a class of button. And we'll just say buy now. Okay, it's not going to have actual e-commerce functionality. So this is what pretty much all of our products descriptions are going to look like. Let's copy that. And then let's choose the shirts category. And we can add some tags. We'll say blue shirt, white shirt, clothes. Okay, we added those. And that looks good. So let's go ahead and publish. All right, we'll go back to the home page and there's our shirt. Okay, I'm going to disable the hello world post here. All right, so uh, yeah, I guess I'll just move it to the trash. All right, and then we'll add some more. So this one, let's see, we'll go upload the image. We'll grab the black shirt. And we'll say black shirt. And then I'm just going to paste in what we had for the other one. Okay, we'll publish that. And I'm just going to go ahead and add the rest of them, and I'll be back. All right, so I went ahead and added the rest of the products. Let's go to the front end and reload. And there we go. So it's starting to look like a real shopping cart. Now, if I go and I click on a details, it takes us to the correct place, to the right product, but this isn't how we want it set up. All right, we want to have the description. We want it to look like a real, uh, like a real shopping cart page. And another issue, if we go to, to a regular page, not a post, like say the about page, it's formatted the same way as the, the main post page. So we don't want that either. So in the next video, we'll take care of that and we'll get these pages looking correctly. All right, so up to this point, we're doing pretty good. Uh, we have our main post page or my our home page done. But if I click on one of these and we go to the single product page, it doesn't look too good. All right, and we're missing a bunch of information. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file inside the My Shop Theme folder. And we're going to save it as single dot php all right and just by creating that file if we go back to the single view and reload it's blank okay because it's looking at this file so what we'll do is let's copy everything we have in the index page all right so we'll grab all of it and we'll paste it in and 
I'm going to get rid of the showcase part because uh, we don't want that. We only want the showcase on the home page. So I'm going to get rid of it and I'm just going to put an HR tag in there. All right. Now we're going to be doing this same thing as far as checking for posts and looping through the post, even though it's a single post. But I'm going to get rid of everything that's in between the while loop. Okay, we're just going to get that out. And then we're going to create a new div with the class. Uh, let's create a div with the class of row. And also single product. Okay, and then inside there, we're going to have a five column div. Okay, so this will be large five and columns. Okay, and inside there, uh, we're going to have our go back link. And let's put a line break. And then we're going to check for the, the featured image or the thumbnail. So I'm going to just copy uh, right here. We just want to check to see if it's there. And if it is, then we'll display it. Okay, and then that should be it for the five column div. Okay, so that's just going to be the image basically. And then after that, we're going to have a seven column div. Okay, and then this is going to have the title, which we'll put in an H2. So we'll say PHP, the title. And right under that, we're going to put the content. All right, and then we'll do an HR tag, and then we want the tags. In this code, I'm actually just going to paste in. Okay, so you just want to get that copied. We're just checking for the tags, and then we're checking to see if the function exists, and then we're going to spit them out. All right, so let's go ahead and save this, and we'll go back to our page and reload. And now we have a product page. Okay, so for the go back, right now it's, it's not going to anything. What we can do is let's have it go to the home page. We'll say PHP, and we should be able to say site underscore URL. Okay, actually, we need to echo it. All right, go back. And it brings us back to our home page. So that looks good. Um, now, we also want to be able to have multiple images in here as well. So let's go to our posts in the back end and let's go to blue and white shirt. And what I want to do is click on add media and then create gallery. I'm going to upload a couple more files. Okay, I have these files here. And I want to use those and create a new gallery. For the link, we'll just say media file and insert gallery. Okay, let's update. Go back to the front end, reload. And now we have some images for that product. Okay, so that looks pretty much like a... Um, like a standard shopping cart details page all right so we're getting there now for the regular pages like about obviously we don't want this so what we can do is go into our folder and create a new file and we'll save it as page.php all right and then if we go back to here and we reload it's going to be blank all right let's grab what we have in the index page Paste it right in there. 
and then we want to go down to where the the post loop is and let's just take everything out from within the while loop and what we'll do is we'll create a div and this will be a 12 column so we'll say large 12 columns all right and then here let's do an h3 that'll have the title Okay, under the title, let's do the whole thumbnail thing. I'm just going to grab it from here. Grab that. Okay, so if there's an image, it'll show it. And then we just need the content. All right, let's save it. Let's go back to about. And now we have just a standard page with a title and then the body. Okay, sample page, same thing. So we're looking pretty good. Now, if you do, if you want to have comments on your product or post pages, you could do that. I'm um, not sure if you would want to, but um, if you do, we could go to single.php and go probably go like right here and just say PHP comments underscore template and save it go back reload and now we have a comments let's say this is a test comment alright so then it will leave comments and I don't think that looks that great of course you could create your own comments template and make this look a little better we've done that in past past themes um, so I don't really want to go through that again um, and you may even rebrand it as reviews as a product review you could do that as well alright so we're gonna go ahead and stop here we introduced a few new aspects um, of WordPress theme development in this project such as creating your own plugin widget and also uh, implementing the image, the logo, and the customizer, and so on. All right, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next project.